Good afternoon. Welcome to another exciting adventure of Reading with Mr. Emily. The Miscalculations of Lightning Girl. Uh, we're going to keep on reading. Sorry I missed the morning announcements today. I was in a meeting. Uh, it was a very important meeting, so I was very happy to, to be in that meeting, but I apologize about no morning announcements. I'll be there for afternoon announcements. I missed yesterday too because I was in a meeting. So here we go. Chapter 32 of The Miscalculations of Lightning Girl. Wendy's birthday is Saturday, and Pi still hasn't found a home. His blog has 17 comments, all different ways of saying, poor puppy. I don't want to go to the party. I want to go back to the pet hut. But Nana knows about the sleepover, and how excited Wendy is, and she won't let me skip. Wendy invited every girl in our homeroom class to her celebration at the water park, and nine said yes, including Wendy. Nana takes me to Target to buy a new bathing suit for the occasion. It isn't the right season for swimming, but we find a pretty pretty one piece that is a size too big on a clearance rack. We buy it anyway. I can't find any water shoes on the shelves, so my old pair will have to do. We need to get Wendy a gift, Nana says, admiring a tie-dye craft kit also in the clearance section. I'm making her a gift. Oh, great. I hope so. Maybe only grandparents like homemade gifts. With so many girls going, Miss Sitton takes five in her SUV and Maddie's mom drives the other four. I can't believe I'll be spending 32 hours with Maddie. I text Levi from the car. Me, let me know if Pi gets adopted. Levi, don't get your hopes up. Hope is all I have. Me, you should adopt him. Levi, I can't. Me, did you even ask your moms? Levi, a thousand times. Me, stop being inaccurate. Levi, I asked at least five times. Levi, I'll ask one more. Me, thanks. Levi, try not to drown. Levi, and try not to drown Maddie. Oh, that's adorable. We get to the water park at 158. The place is bigger than an airport. While Miss Sitton and Mrs. Thornton check us into the hotel room, all the girls use their cell phones to take selfies and post them on the internet. Wendy makes sure I get in a few of the pictures. I try to smile as big as everyone else as I tap my toe three times. When can we go on the rides? Maddie asks. Miss Sitton hands out the bracelets that are our tickets. Let's drop all our stuff in the room first. Then we can all change into swimsuits. Miss Sitton is talking about is talking about me. All the other girls wore their swimsuits under their clothes. They need to strip off their t-shirts and pants and they'll be ready to dive in. I wish someone had told me to lay her up. We shove into the elevator with our 17 bags. Even the elevator smells of chlorine and has a wet floor. Wendy smiles at me and squeezes my hand. She's so happy. I feel guilty for dreading every minute of this. The room, a suite, is huge. It's bigger than the apartment I live in. Someone has hung streamers and tied up balloons. I count 30 of them. Awesome, Daniela says, admiring a basket of snacks on the table. We're sleeping in here. Wendy points to a room that looks like an old log cabin. Everyone runs to pick a bed. I get there last, and Maddie has already taken the bunk with Wendy. For someone who usually can't st stand breathing the same air as Wendy and me, Maddie, Maddie suddenly can't get, enough, get close enough to Wendy. Are you okay with the cot? Wendy asks. A rollaway sits in the middle of the room. It's fine, I lie. I want one of the cool bunk beds. They look like canoes, and each has a TV mounted on a swivel arm. But it's not my birthday. This is all for Wendy. I don't carry my Clorox wipes down to the water park. I tell myself that the chlorine in the water will be enough to kill the germs. We show the employee at the door our wristbands as we go inside. He's cute, Maddie whispers to Wendy, and he was checking you out. Really? The guy has to be at least 18. Still, Wendy giggles and kind of dances as she walks. I pull my bathing suit straps tighter so I don't have such a big gap in the front. My lightning bolt charm swings from my neck. I should have taken it off, but I feel even more naked without it. Girls, Miss Sitton has to yell to talk, talk to us over the sound of rushing water. We need to find a central spot and then we'll go over the rules. Maddie's mom points to some free lounge chairs. We throw our towels and beach bags down. The other girls kick off their flip flops. I keep my too tight water shoes on. This place is so cool, Maddie says. She looks different when she's happy and not scowling at me. We're gonna stop for one second. So give me a second. second. I'm back.
Hope you missed it. Okay. Here we go. Oh, uh, wherever we go. Need to find a central spot. Then we'll go over the rules. Maddie's mom points to some free lounge chairs. We throw our towels and beach bags down. The other girls kick off their flip flops. I keep my too tight water shoes on. This place is so cool, Maddie says. She looks different when she's happy and not scowling at me. Madison, her mom says, will you please stand up straight? And she pats her own stomach. Maddie stops smiling. She pulls her shoulders back and sucks in her stomach. Mrs. Thornton gives her a little nod before turning to help Miss Sitton. Maddie doesn't move. I'm not even sure she's breathing. It's like all the excitement and happiness drained out of her in that moment of good posture. Then she catches me watching and gives me her death stare. What are you looking at? I don't answer. Instead, I focus on rebraiding my hair. We're going to use a, a buddy system, Miss Sitton says. No one goes off by themselves. Got it, girls? Immediately, everyone starts grabbing hands. This buddy system business is serious. Wendy gets pulled at from two directions, Maddie on her left and Daniela on her right. We're an odd number, Caitlin points out. We'll have one group of three, Miss Sitton says. We'll be the truddy, Maddie says. She takes Daniela's other hand, and suddenly they are a circle-like shape, but they don't have a true radius. This forces the other group of three, Jennifer, Jasmine, and Caitlin, to break up. Jennifer, why don't you be a buddy with Lucy, Miss Sitton suggests. Jennifer puffs out a loud breath and takes a step toward me. I put my hands behind my back, but she doesn't try to grab them anyway. We can switch partners in a few hours, Miss Sitton adds. We can be buddies later, Wendy says to me, okay? Then Miss Sitton tells us her other rules. No leaving the water park area. The arcade and ice cream shop are off limits. We need to check in every 30 minutes at this spot. None of us have watches, and I don't see a clock. So I don't know how she expects us to keep time. I'm tempted to count seconds in my head. Stay with your buddy at all times and have fun. What do you want? I try to ask Jennifer. Come on, she says, following the treaty toward a staircase. It rises four stories high and is crowded with people. What is this ride? I ask. They move too fast to answer me. We climb 20 steps and join the back of the line. I manage not to touch anything, especially the metal handrail. I tap my toe three times. We move slowly up the steps. More people crush in behind us. There's hardly room to breathe. Jennifer and the truddy form a small huddle and I hang to the outside. This is the best ride, Maddie says. I rode it like a thousand times when I was here over the summer. Not possible. Even with no line, I estimate it would take her at least 50 hours to ride it a thousand times, I think. I heard a 10 year old died on this ride last week, Jennifer adds. It wasn't last week, Maddie says. It was over a year ago. If it was last week, the ride wouldn't be open now. My stomach flips. I'm not afraid of heights or going fast. I don't think anyone actually died on the ride. It's a used band aid on the next step that makes me ill. This place is very unclean. It's disgusting. Are you okay? Wendy asks. I force myself to nod and not throw up. I'm not going to ruin Wendy's birthday. Good, she says. Just want everyone to get along. Then she whispers to me, Maddie is being so nice. I bet she's only doing it because her mom warned her or something. I want to say, and that's okay with you? She's being forced to be your friend for the day? Instead, I shrug. We're almost there, Daniela says. We still have two flights to go. We were close enough to read the warning sign. No pregnant women, no heart patients. You must be 48 inches tall to ride. Four people ride in one tube, Jennifer points out. We can go together. She still has her back to me. But we're five people, Wendy says. Maddie, Daniela, and I will go together, and you go with Lucy. She's your buddy. But if Lucy and I go together, then we're going to have to ride with them. With her thumb, she points to the father and son in line behind us. I don't want to go with strangers. As we travel up the next flight, they debate who should ride with whom. Wendy's the only one who thinks four is the wrong answer. I don't say anything. I'll go with Lucy, Wendy says, but Maddie makes a pouty face. It's your birthday. I want to go on the first ride with you. We used to ride carousels together. It's like tradition. Wendy bites her lip like she can't decide. You don't care, do you, Lucy? Maddie finally asks me. I promise we'll wait for you at the bottom. I shrug. Really? Wendy asks. You're next in line. We'll take turns, Jennifer says. Next time, someone else will ride alone. I don't think she's volunteering. I watch as the four friends get into the cloverleaf-shaped inner tube. Wendy waves goodbye to me as the guy working the ride pushes them into the tunnel. The echo of their laughs and screams lasts long, and long after they've disappeared. How many? asks the guy holding the empty tube. I hold up one finger. He points to a spot and asks the man behind me the same question. I don't move. The father and son climb in, followed by a lady who's wearing long shorts and a t-shirt instead of a bathing suit. Come on, the employee says. You're holding up the line. I'm not ready. 
When the light on the wall changes to green, he sends the tube forward into the tunnel. The next group is four teenage guys. They get in without hesitation. The light changes. The ride starts. I watch another group of four, and then two doubles, another set of doubles, another group of four. When a group of three steps up, a mom and her two daughters, who are barely 48 inches, the worker gives me a choice. Get on this ride or go back down the stairs. You can't stand here. It's against the rules. I take a step toward the stairs. I don't want to push past all the wet people, rubbing skin to wet skin. It'll be okay, sweetie, the woman says. We went on it earlier. It's not that scary, says the girl with pigtails. I step into the water. I lower myself into the, one of the seats. I stand up. I sit. I stand up. Come on, the guy yells. I sit for the third time, and the stupid jerk probably thinks that it's because he yelled. I don't want to hold the plastic candles, but when he pushes us into the dark tunnel, I grab on and close my eyes. The ride is fast and kind of fun. I get water up my nose, and I scream louder than I ever have in my life. I imagine that the loops and twists are perfectly calculated equations. I'm riding math. As I step out of the bottom of the ride, I dunk my hands into the ankle-high water, hoping to clean off the germs. That wasn't so bad, was it? The woman asks. It was kind of awesome, I admit. She waves goodbye, and I look around for my buddy in the Truddy group. They're gone. Chapter 33. I walk the outside loop of the water park, looking for the other girls. I bump into Jasmine and her buddy. Have you seen Jennifer or Wendy? I ask. Nope. They don't even stop. I decide to go back to the chairs and catch up with them there. Hey, Lucy, Miss Sitton says, looking up for a magazine. Are you checking in? I guess. Where's your buddy? I don't know. Her lips squeeze into a tight single line. She looks over at Maddie's mom. We were supposed to stay together, Miss Sorton says. We explained that, clearly. Sorry, it wasn't my fault. We got separated and... Who is your buddy? She asks. Jennifer. Miss Sitton sits up. Her mother said she's not a very strong swimmer. I hope she's all right. Don't worry, I'll find her. You wait here in case she comes back. Miss Thornton stands and pulls on a cover-up. She's probably with Wendy and Danielle and Maddie, I say, but Miss Thornton is already gone. This place makes me so nervous, Miss Sitton says. I guess she's talking to me since I'm the only one left. She looks out at the giant wave pool at the end of the room. I wrap my towel around my waist and sit, stand, sit, stand, sit on the end of a chair. Feels like forever before Maddie's mom comes back with Jennifer and the Truddy group. Where'd you go? Jennifer asks like I was her missing two-year-old. We couldn't find you anywhere. You never came down the ride, Wendy says. I don't bother to explain. Miss Sitton shakes her head. I'm glad everyone's all right. Then she goes over all the rules again and insists that we sit down for 10 minutes and think about it. We are in middle school and she's putting us in time out. Mom, you're embarrassing me, Wendy says. Her cheeks are blotchy and red. I don't care, Mom says. I feel Jennifer's eyes trying to burn me. I want to tell her that she can't kill me by staring. Instead, I focus on my water shoes. We don't eat dinner until 8.30. Even with three bathrooms in our suite, it takes the group a long time to get ready. 97 minutes from the time we walk into the room, dripping and smelling like chlorine, until the time we walk back out in our nice clothes. Everyone except Jennifer and me are wearing skirts or dresses. But Jennifer is still stylish in pants that look like purple leather and a shirt that hangs off one shoulder. I wear a teal and pink striped shirt, like the colors of 107 and 42, and dark jeans. I consider this my lucky shirt because it has a prime number of stripes, 17. It's harder than you'd think to find clothes with prime numbers in them. After dinner, we go upstairs to the suite for Wendy to open presents. I regret making my gift. Who does that? I should have bought the tie-dye kit. Wendy carefully unwraps my box. A smile spreads across her face as she reads the title of the book I made. 101 Other Things You Never Knew About Your Best Friend. It's a sequel to the one we filled out at her house when first spent the night. It took me 30 hours, 50 sheets of paper, two yards of ribbon for the binding, a pack of 12 markers, 100 stickers, and one ruler. And it wasn't easy. The original had the obvious questions, like what's your middle name, your favorite color, most embarrassing moment. My book asks, what's your favorite prime number? If you discovered a planet, what would you name it? How many letters are in your whole name? That's cute, Maddie says when Wendy holds it up. We should totally fill it in. Wendy says thank you to everyone after opening each present. She doesn't seem to like any one gift more than the others, but it's obvious my present costs the least. Maddie gives her a silver necklace that says Wendy in scrolly letters. It's really cool and expensive. We all know it's really expensive because Maddie tells us. The shipping alone was like $30 because we ordered it from New York. You can't buy jewelry with the name Wendy off the shelf. It's got to be custom ordered. It's awesome, Maddie. Wendy gives her a hug. After all the gifts are open, I kind of wish Miss Sinton would tell us it's bedtime. I also want her to say that there's been a change of plans. We need to leave first thing in the morning. She does neither. Have fun, girls. She turns on the gigantic television, tells Wendy to order any movie she wants. 
Just keep the noise down, she warns. And Maddie, as Thornton leans over her daughter but talks loud enough for all to hear, watch your diet. You have a gymnastics meet next week weekend. You need to stay trim. I know, Mom. Maddie's cheeks redden. Levi were here. I imagine he'd snap her picture at this moment. He could label the photo rage or embarrassment or disappointment. I tell him to send the picture to Mrs. Thornton because she doesn't seem to notice any of it. Miss Sitton and Mrs. Thornton go into the room and leave us alone. I help Wendy gather snacks from the little kitchen in the back of the suite. Candy, cookies, popcorn, and chips, and not a single vegetable. Are you having fun? Wendy asks me. I shrug, but then force myself to nod. Me too. She smiles and does a little dance. Best birthday ever. And everyone is being so cool. I was kind of worried. Don't you think that's weird? I ask as I grab a pack of soda out of the mini fridge. What do you mean? Why is Maddie being nice to you? I mean, she's never... Wendy interrupts me. We used to be best friends. Are you jealous? No, no. I think the only person I've ever been jealous of is Squarehead314 when he or she finishes a problem faster than me. Good, because you're my BFF now. I've just known Maddie longer. I nod and smile. Things will go back to normal next week, I hope. Where's the food? Someone yells from the living room. Coming, Wendy answers. I follow her back to the group. We pass out the snacks, and then I find a spot on the floor next to Jennifer's feet. My sit-stand routine, which everyone should be used to, is even more obvious when I'm trying to sit on the floor. After watching two movies in the living room, I tell everyone I'm tired, which I am. I'm going to bed. I wish I were going to my real bed. Good night, Wendy stands and gives me a hug. I love your gift, she whispers. I text Levi from my cot. I didn't drown. Having fun? He asks. Not really, Levi. It's almost over. Me. I'm stuck here another 14 hours, Levi. That's 50,400 seconds. Levi, I did that in my head. I laugh. I know he's using a calculator, but I appreciate his effort to make fun of me. Me. Good night, Levi. Later, freak. I fall asleep pretty quickly. I think, does anyone ever really know the exact moment they fall asleep? When the rest of the girls come to bed later, they wake me up. I turn over and keep my eyes closed. I guess I'm pretending to be asleep, though that sounds dishonest. I am trying to fall back asleep. The girls laugh and joke around. They're pinching each other, jumping from bed to bed and Daniela is trying to pull down everyone's pants. At least that's what I think is happening. My eyes are still closed. Shh, Wendy says laughing. Lucy's asleep. Yes, everyone, quiet, Maddie says, not quiet at all. Don't wake her up. I can't deal with her anymore tonight. Maddie does something that makes everyone laugh, probably making fun of me. Let's ha hide her stash of cleaning wipes, Maddie suggests. Don't be mean, Wendy says. Jeez, I was kidding. I, don't just, I just don't get it, Maddie actually lowers her voice. Lucy's okay for a little while. I don't know how you hang out with her all the time. I hold my breath, waiting for Wendy to say something. I want to close my ears like I can close my eyes. She's cool, Wendy says rather unconvincingly, like the way I say that all classes are as important as math. If you say so, Maddie replies. You really should give her a chance. She's nice and she's funny. She's not good at painting nails, but she's smart. And she's helping a lot of dogs find loving homes. She also doesn't know how to be normal, Maddie says. Bed creaks again and again. Some of the girls laugh. That kid who used to pull out his hair was more normal than Lucy. She's so... Leave her alone. You shouldn't make fun of her. She was struck by lightning. Wendy blurts out. My heart stops. That's actually possible without a massive zap of electricity. The room is full of gasps. If I don't move, maybe I'll turn invisible. All I want is to disappear. What are you talking about? Maddie's voice rises above the rest. Nothing. Wendy, speak, Maddie orders. Shh, Wendy says. Lucy was struck by lightning in elementary school. It turned her into a math genius. Oh, my God, someone says. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I think I can't move. I'm too shocked. Shut up, shut up. She's smarter than Einstein. She's smarter than Mr. Stoker, Wendy continues. She can do any math problem. How many geniuses do you know? She could be in college or working for some government agency. She's way smarter than any of us or anyone we've ever met. I'd open my eyes if I thought it wouldn't cry. But what about the sitting and the cleaning, Jennifer asks. Is that because of the lightning, too? I guess, Wendy answers. Whatever, good at math and a human lightning rod. That's what you call cool, Maddie asks. Maybe she's smart, but she's incredibly weird. She's going to end up living alone in a basement with a bunch of cats. Wendy, you used to have better taste in friends. Well, it's not like you even talked to me at school. You've been ignoring me all year, Wendy says. Can't tell whether Wendy's crying. Lucy's the only one who wants to hang out with me. Wendy, you're still one of my BFFs. We've known each other forever. We all love you, Maddie says. Yeah, Danielle agrees. Love you, Wendy, another adds. Middle school's different, Maddie continues. My mom says it's all about balance. I have to make time for my schoolwork, my family, and my gymnastics, and all my friends. You haven't found much time for me, Wendy whispers. 
I will, I promise, Maddie says. I was thinking, you should join my team for the Cougars Care Project. I already have a team, Wendy says. You don't belong on that team, Maddie says. You're not a weirdo. You don't need to hang out with the cleaning lady and that stalker kid with the camera. Once she starts talking about Levi, I can't take it anymore. I sit up, the room gets quiet, and everyone looks at me. Sorry, did we wake you? Maddie asks with a voice full of knives. Everyone laughs, everyone but Wendy. Lucy, are you okay? Wendy asks. She takes the seat on the end of my cot. Leave me alone, I say. I grab the pillow and walk out to the suite's living room. Lucy, Wendy calls, wait. Let her go, Maddie says. Don't let her ruin your birthday. The end. So we'll stop there. Uh, we'll keep on reading on Monday at 12 o'clock. We'll probably, I think, we'll probably finish this uh, next week. So we'll probably finish it at some point next week. But you all have a good day. Keep working hard, students. Uh, take care of each other. Most importantly, stay safe. And remember, range is the way.